this video, I'm going to walk you through the framework that we have developed to help service-based businesses understand the value, the impact, how much they can charge, and really if they have a viable business on their hands. And then I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to go through our framework to apply these learnings to improve that without really making any major overhaul changes to your business. It's all about understanding what the customer needs, what the demand on the market is, and then packaging that into an offer that your target customer will jump at. And I'm going to do so by actually walking you through a live coaching call from one of our blueprint training coaching members where i helped him to validate his business from a question on our slack channel let's get into it hey Derry, what's up man wanted to shoot this quick video to answer your question about validating your offer and really helping you understand which direction and which service to offer within your business so the question you asked is regarding your positioning and which will eventually lead into your offer. And this is something that I see so many agencies struggle with. So I wanna spend some time showing you how you can think through this problem. So the question that you asked is regarding your positioning. And this is something that I see pretty much every agency struggle with is understanding how do you position yourself in the market? How do you create an offer that attracts people to you? And how do you feed that into a service that's highly profitable with not a lot of effort? And the reason why I wanna jump in and shoot this video is because you're actually going down the wrong path that's going to have a position that very few people will want and offer that not a lot of people are gonna jump at and the people that do are always gonna be underpaying you for the amount of work that you're putting in. So let me jump over to our presentation deck real quick so I can run you through this framework. So the positioning that you're playing with right now is SEO optimized video script for educational YouTube channels. Now there's four very simple questions that you should ask yourself before even going down the positioning to understand what the market is, right? Is there a market for this and are people willing to pay for it? So the four simple questions that I recommend are as follows. Number one is, is there a pain that needs solving? This is really, really important when it comes to positioning and offer design is understanding the pain that your potential customer is experiencing. Because if that pain is great enough that needs solving, we need to understand how painful that problem is so we can understand the value of that problem and how much we can charge for it. So when we put ourselves in your example here, for example, right? How much of a pain is SEO optimized video scripts for educational based YouTube channels? And my hypothesis would be very little. And that's because I run a educational based YouTube channel. And I can tell you that there is a need for this, right? Every single video that we post does need descriptions. And yes, those descriptions do aid in the uh, SEO ranking and the number of views that it gets. But the amount that I'd be willing to pay for that because of the level of effort, the level of expertise, and the level of overall business impact that that would have would be very, very little. In fact, it's one of those things where because we you know, publish YouTube videos once a week, I kind of just write them on the fly. It doesn't actually take that much time, even though, again, there is tremendous value in doing this the right way. So there is a pain that needs to be solved in terms of that video script, um, you know, specifically for educational, any type of YouTube channel, right? That is a pain that does exist in the market, but how valuable is that pain? How much pain does that cause me? Not enough. I mean, not enough that I've ever even really sought out help to, to hire someone to do this. And even though I might be interested in this, I probably wouldn't be willing to pay more than, you know, 10 to 20 bucks per description just because I know the market for this and I know the market for a writer and I could grab someone off Upwork to do this. Granted, it would take me a little bit more time and we'll talk about this in a second, how this fits in. But this is something that you really need to understand. It's not that painful of a problem for businesses to want to invest a lot of money in it. So I'm never a fan of service-based businesses that have to go low ticket and high volume. Right? I'd rather have a service-based business that does very low volume, but very high ticket, because again, we're getting paid a lot more to solve the same type problem with probably the same amount of effort. And I'm gonna walk you through a little bit more of that in a second. So is there purchasing power, right? So again, now we look at the actual purchasing power, not aside from the problem, how much money does an educational YouTube channel have and how much are they willing to invest into this problem? Again, I would hypothesize that's that's not very much. And then the final one here is, is the customer easy to find and target? So I always put myself in the, in the shoes of like going into Facebook ads and setting ads for this. How are you going to target educational YouTube channels aside from maybe doing manual research, pulling those, scraping them, sending manual outreach? The point is you can already start to feel the amount of work it is to find and target and sell and convince these people is a lot less than they're gonna be willing to pay. So you've got an equation here that's not not valued in your favor and also the fact that the customer is not getting a lot of value for it and they're not going to want to pay a lot for it and you're going to have to do a lot of work for it so this is a chart here that i hope will help to drive some more context in terms of the impact and the value and the price that you can charge for your positioning and for your offer so this is just a simple two by two matrix what you see here is this is really more for us internally too this is not necessarily client facing this is for us to validate if an offer is gonna be worth our time or if positioning is gonna be worth our time to exploring based on the impact that we can have, the value that we can drive and the price that we can charge to our potential clients. So again, this two by two matrix, 
Uh, basically in the bottom right hand corner here is a bad offer, right? It's going to be something that has uh, low information needs to do it, but also requires high labor, right? So you can see the up and down scale is for labor. The right and left scale here is for information. So anything in the bottom right quadrant is going to be low information uh, with high labor, right? That means, you know, think about lawn cutting. Somebody cutting your lawn, as an example, doesn't require a lot of information, but requires a lot of labor. It's a bad offer for the business owner because they can't charge a lot for it because the person paying for the lawn mowing knows that this is something that they could easily do themselves. They just don't have the time for it, right? So they're just willing to pay. But again, the market then settles and commoditizes uh, based on all the you know businesses and, uh, and offers out there that are going to be able to suffice this right we want to live up here in the upper left hand quadrant that's going to be require high knowledge of information right high value information in order to get this done something that only you know something that is a problem that you can solve for a specific type of client that you know and aka we like to call this creating a market of one so again down here it's going to be highly commoditized offer lawn mowing uh, writing descriptions for youtube channels right if you think about that it doesn't require a lot of knowledge, but it does require a lot of effort, right? So it's kind of like I said, as a business owner, I would not really want to invest a lot of money into it, just like a homeowner doesn't want to invest a lot of money into lawn mowing um, because it's doing something that's a commodity, right? So we want to try and build our offers that are going to be up here uh, in the upper left-hand quadrant. That's going to be low effort for us, but high impact and it requires high knowledge and information to do. This is where we want to live because again, it's not about how much we're putting into it. This is a common fallacy that a lot of agencies think. They think that the more that they put into it, the more value that the client's getting. That's not the case. It's really the bigger the problem, the higher the value of the problem. That's all they care about is getting that solved. And then us as a business, we want to optimize to do the least amount of effort so our profitability is the highest. And then again, that way we can be highly profitable and highly successful servicing a smaller amount of clients with a much larger upside and a much larger profit margin. So again, we have a lot more training about this in the blueprint training that you have access to in, this, in the agency strategy module, uh, but it just goes a little bit more into uh, talking about the different ways you can set up these offers uh, in order to, you know, just have a, a much larger impact and understand the pricing economics of it as well. So the final piece of this, and this is actually new to the blueprint, uh, I actually stole this and borrowed this concept from Alex Hormozzi's book, uh, $100 million offers, really, really good book, highly recommend you read it. But what he talks a lot about is understanding how to put together a high value offer, right? And he put together an actual equation that is highly, highly impactful that I think you can use as a framework uh, in terms of validating your position in your offer. So first and foremost, this is the equation, right? This is a highly, highly valued offer. He calls it an offer that people would feel dumb saying no to, right? So the way that we put this together is we come up with their dream outcome, right? So again, if we go back to educational content creators, what is their dream outcome? What are they trying to achieve? They don't really care about descriptions, do they? They care about more visibility, more sales. So knowing that surgery outcome, that's what we want to start with. So if we can help them to get to their end goal, not their input, right? YouTube descriptions are an input required to get to their dream outcome. But why would we focus on solving a low value problem when we want to go all the way to the top, to the neck, and we want to focus on solving that problem. So if the dream outcome would be something like, you know, a million views a month on YouTube, right? That's what they actually care about. That's what they want about. Uh, and then we want to times that by the perceived likelihood of achievement. So what this means, right, is the confidence of the buyer that you can get this done, right? So you cited a past example about all these videos that you're getting 100,000 views on. That is a will re increase your perceived likelihood of achievement. That's something that we want to dump into here, right? So this is more of, and I'll show you how this plays out in a second, but this is more of kind of like an exercise that you can go through uh, by just assigning that. And again, it's not necessarily based on the exact percentage increase of, of what you can get. It's more based on the market's perception of what you can drive. What is the market's confidence, right? In terms of the buyers or the customer's confidence that you can help them to achieve their dream outcome. Then the bottom part of this equation is the time delay. How long is it going to take? People always want things quicker, right? So how long is this going to take for them to get the results? The lower that we can get this, the better the offer is going to be. And then how much effort and sacrifice is going to take on their part in order to get this done? Again, the lower this is, the better the offer is going to be. So let's run through this real quick. The highest valuable offer, aka creating an offer that somebody says no to, we want to try and increase the top as much. So higher dream outcomes, million, a million views per day, a million views per month, whatever that is, uh, times a high likelihood of, of, of achievement divided by the shortest possible time to get there and the least amount of effort to get there on the part of the customer. That's how you put together a great offer. So again, you're just, you're going in the right direction, but you're missing some of the small pieces here in terms of how can you go to the end goal of what they actually want? They don't care about YouTube descriptions. They care about views and sales. So let's just go there. And what are the inputs needed to get there? And then we have a whole offer design framework which is on this slide here, which shows you how to build this offer based on what it is that they want. So again, what goes into solving a client's problem? This is their end goal here, AKA their biggest pain point. 
I, I need more views on YouTube. I want to get to a million views a month. That's their kind of dream outcome here, right? So we then put together what it's going to take to do that. So what's the pillar one? What are the roadblocks that's stopping them from getting there? What are the things that they can't do that you can do for them or help them do or instruct them on how to do to help them get to a million views a month on YouTube, right? So part of that might be like keyword research and topic research. <clears throat> Another one might be like increased video production. The final one might be actually like putting together, uploading the videos, which is where the YouTube descriptions would fall into. If you can help a customer do all three of these things, then you have a happy customer who's getting a million views a month, right? And this is really where the, the elements of our service come into play. So we just generalize this into three simple things. Now it's up to you to decide how to deliver this. Are you going to teach them how to do it? Are you going to do it for them? Are you going to help them to do it? Are you going to coach them on how to do it? This is where we can really start to play with how the offer is delivered, how the service is delivered, and where things can really start to get lethal. Because at the end of the day, you maybe you can't film the videos for them, right? But that's something that they have to do in order to get them to where they need to be. That needs to be taken into account when you're putting together kind of your offering your core service. And then once you have this, then we teach you, of course, how to turn this into a productized service, how to map this out, how to build a project plan, and how to actually deliver this for a client. So this is a very long-winded ex explanation here about um, kind of market selection and how to validate your business and make sure that it's going the right way. And I hope this helped you out here because, again, the offer and position that I saw you posting was going in the wrong direction. I hope you can see why we want to apply this framework to make sure that you're going the right direction, which is bigger impact for your customers and clients, less work in terms of your time and your team, higher margins for you, and better results for your customers. And then turn that into a flywheel to then increase the confidence of the market that you can do this more and more and more. And then you become the person who is the best in the world at doing this over a significant amount of time as you keep getting practice, you keep doing this, and you keep helping clients to get to where they need to be. So uh, hopefully that helps. If you have any follow-up questions, please let me know on Slack. Talk soon, brother. If any of you are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching for your business, for your service-based business, for your agency, hit the link below, schedule a time to talk to one of our growth consultants. This is the type of work that we do every single day, one-on-one -on -one with the clients in the Blueprint Training. We are gonna help you to build a business that people actually want to work with that's highly profitable, highly scalable, and highly enjoyable for you to run. So if you're interested, hit the link below, and we'll talk to you soon.